Hello and welcome to the session titled Do-It-Yourself Professional Development. My name is Darren Wilson and I'm going to be your online host for the next 45 minutes or so. I'd like to um, wish you a good morning or a good afternoon, whatever it is when you're watching this video. For me, it's actually Sunday afternoon, about 3.30, and I'm recording this ahead of time because I won't be able to make it to Rawls this week because I have staff development that I'm conducting in Guthrie this week. So I'm. this is my attempt of being two places at the same time, so I hope it goes well. We'll find out. Uh, it was my intent to record myself on the webcam so you could see me. Uh, it's a little more personal that way, but unfortunately I've been struggling with the webcam and it's not cooperating. So instead of getting to see the real me, you get to see the cartoon version of me. And we'll just hope that that's the next best thing. So you get to watch that. I, You know, I had this really awesome plan where my little picture would be in the bottom corner of the screen and you could see me talking while looking at the slides. And um, you know, it just didn't work out that way, so we're going to roll with the punches. While I'm starting, um, I've got a little, a few introductory comments to make uh, before we get started into the real meat and potatoes of the session. Um, I would like you to do a couple of things while you're listening. Um, make sure that you've got your laptop out and get those things started up. Um, there's a few things I'm going to want you to do and to find those resources when you get your laptop going. Just go to www.darrenwilson.net. And when you get to my home page, you're going to see a link at the top of the page for Rawls Teachers. Just click on that link, and then you'll be uh, where you need to be. So let's go ahead and get started with the session. Um, my thesis statement for today is this. As teachers, it's our responsibility to be the exemplary learners on campus. And we're going to we're gonna hit on this a few times today, but I just wanted to throw this out there first. Um, and let me, let me hit you with a couple more um, ideas here, just to kind of get you thinking uh, in the direction that I'm going. We all know, and we've, because we've experienced this um, for years now, that information is being constructed and reconstructed daily and at rates that we can't keep up with anymore. Um, things change quickly and are changing faster every year and it's just it's very difficult to keep up the same way that we always have um, and we were all caught in that shift whether it's in the classroom or for personal learning things just are happening faster now than they used to it's causing us to have to rethink a lot of things you know take this for example think back to when you were in college whether that was five years ago 10 15 20 years ago um, the things that we learned just don't seem to matter as much anymore as they did when we were actually there. Uh, whether that's just you know information that was out of date, or not even just the content that's out of date, but maybe the practices that we learned. You know, we always have caught ourselves saying, you know, kids today aren't like the what they used to be. Well, you know, every generation has said that, and it's true. We, we change, we learn um, in different ways now than we did before. And while we agree that our students learn differently now. Um, we also have to accept the fact that adults don't learn in the same way anymore. You know, no longer can teachers wait to be taught in an in-service or workshop um, something they need to know right away. Um, it used to be that we would all go as a faculty to an in-service, you know, whether at the service center or, you know, those those in-services we have at the beginning or in this case at the end of a school year and we all go sit in the same room that just is not as effective anymore uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, but with this, with information changing as quickly as it does, um, that's we can't afford that luxury anymore. In addition, I think it's obvious that everyone is strapped for time. And I think we can all agree that there's just not enough hours in the day for us to wait for someone to teach us everything that we need to know to get our jobs done or to improve the way that we're doing our jobs. There's just not that kind of time. It's, it's crazy that we should have to wait until a certain day where we can all assemble together uh, to be taught something when we have access to the sum of all human knowledge on the internet and we can tap that any time that we need to to learn what we need to learn to keep going. And because of this, you know, professional development needs to be shifted to an active, self-guided, I'm calling it an adventure. Um, it's no longer a task that we can complete or check off the list. It's something that's going to have to be ongoing. Uh, we revisit it every day, every week, and it's just we never get finished with it. It's just going to be looked upon now as something that is a given every day 
we have to go in to learn what we need to do to get through that day uh, to do the best job that we can. And to do that well, we've got to learn to learn in a whole new way. You know, we have a whole new tool set available to us. Uh, the World Wide Web um, brings unlimited resources to us. And if we learn to use those um, in new ways, we learn to learn in new ways. And I guess that's what we're talking about today. So today I've got three things for you to consider um, as far as um, doing your own professional development. First of all, I want you to hang around the type of people you want to be more like. And um, this actually is a piece of advice from my grandmother. Um, I probably heard this the first time back when I was in the third grade. Um, she encouraged me to hang around the right type of people because she knew they would be good examples for me. And of course, the internet brings us a almost unlimited number of good examples for us to follow. Um, there are thousands upon thousands of teachers already online, already pumping out some incredibly good ideas. If you're a science teacher, you'll find science teachers. If you're a second grade teacher, you'll find second grade teachers. There is virtually no limit to the number of people that are out there already doing good things. And the beauty is, they're already doing it for free. They're already doing it out there. Whether you listen to them or not, they're out there pumping out some great ideas. And if you can just locate some great examples, that's going to do a lot for your professional development. So that's item number one. Item number two is going to be listening and learning on your own terms. You know, typical staff development, you have to show up when it's scheduled. You have to be at the right place at the right time and have the right set of tools and be available on other people's terms. With the internet and with some of the resources I'm going to share today, you get to learn on your own terms, whether that be in your house if you're a morning person or if you're an evening person, if you want to listen in your PJs or if you want to listen in your car driving across country. Um, there's really no reason that you can't learn everything you need to know on your own terms your time, your place, your own terms. And the third idea we're going to talk about this morning is seeking different points of view. Um, anytime you build a network of people, um, you are friends with somebody and they have a set of friends and then they have a set of friends, um, you can find people that are similar to you, but the beauty of the network is even though each point on that network is connected in some ways, the good news is that everybody brings their own unique perspective to the network. So once you get plugged into that network, you're not only going to have people with similar interests to you, but also different points of view, different perspectives, and that's going to make your professional development activities online become very rich, much more so than, than the limited network of people you have available in Rawls or in your local network. Okay, so those are the three possibilities we're going to look at today. Um, we have a limited amount of time, so we're going to kind of move quickly through these. Um, what I want to do is make the case for you to be inspired not to do all three of these, but to find one area where you can really plug in um, and just consider what could happen if you just tackled one of those three elements. So down below, I've included a series of videos. I'd like for you to take a look at those as a group and we'll come back together after all the videos are over and try to wrap some things up. Oh, 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 and one more thing. Um, right below this video, there's a link to a pre-session survey, and I'd like for you to click on that right now, and before we show the next video, I'd like you to take just a few minutes on your own laptop and fill in some of these, because we're going we're to take a look at your answers after the last video is over. So please, take a minute to do that. Maybe three or four minutes is all it'll take. And then once everybody in the room's finished, let's go ahead, come back together up on the big screen, and watch the series of videos. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoy this session.